This great deal is, has been in the pipeline for the past 26 years. Started way back in 1995, originally to rationalize the tax the fiscal incentives given to almost all sectors. Because of that, there were so many oppositions. So it was revived in the 11th Congress, 12th Congress, 13th Congress, and it got tracked again on the 14th Congress, uh, and it was approved uh, the third re in the third reading in the lower house and sent to the Senate for concurrence. Unfortunately, because of the issue relative to incentives and third issue be be between Department of Finance and Department of Trade, it was never, never passed again. 2010, uh, and 2019, as discussed by Mr. Barrera, it was originally filed in the House as uh, CITIRA, or the Corporate Income Tax and Incentives Rationalization Act. Then pandemic came, and when the Senate, through Senator Pia Caetano, discussed that way back in October and November, it was now known as corporate recovery and tax incentive for enterprises. So we thank our president because on February 3, uh, the uh, both houses of Congress ratified the same. And on March 26, President Rodrigo uh, Duterte signed this as the Corporate uh, Act or Republic Act 11.534. This is the law, so very voluminous tax, uh, tax report contained in 76 pages, amended 12 section of NIRC, repealed one section. And our objective for today, we will discuss the a newly created Title 13 uh, on the tax incentives with six chapters and 21 sections. So we will discuss the general provision on tax incentives, the tax and duty incentives, the fiscal incentives review board the expansion, who are the qualified uh, projects and activities for the tax incentive under Chapter 4, including the implementing rules and regulation, the Tax Incentives Management and Transparency Act. If you recall, we have a team talo on the reporting, and of course, the issue on transitory and miscellaneous provisions. So briefly, the corporate income tax reduction and other tax measure, uh, as discussed, this is the law, the largest fiscal reduction measure in the Philippine history with major tax savings for businesses of all sizes. Of course, in terms of uh, uh, finance, it will uh, gradually, uh, there, there will be negative impacts on the general collection of our government because of the reductions uh, on the corporate income tax and other measures. Uh, if you recall, previous to create majority, uh, all corporations, whether domestic and foreign, uh, they were paying 30% as a tax rate or regular corporate income tax. But under the create, I wish to call your attention that it was reduced uh, retroactively effective July 1, 2020. And there are two rates. For the large businesses, they will be paying 25%. And micro and small medium enterprises will be paying 20% subject to the following condition that the tax net taxable income should not exceed 5 million and the total asset not exceeding 100 million. That is the baseline under the law excluding land and business. So take note of that. That is the Section 6, amending Section 27A of the tax code. On the minimum corporate income tax, previously under the tax code, it should be 2%. And under the CREATE, it was reduced to 1%. What is the legislative intent of this? As discussed in the floor, the purpose is, of course, to provide tax relief to all corporations in our country for the recovery. In order to support corporations, it also provide the create, provide additional 50% reduction for labor training expenses subject to the following condition, not to exceed 10% direct labor covered by apprenticeship program and supported by DEPET, TESNA, and GED certification. And a non-taxable, non-deductible interest expense. Previously, uh, before the passage of create, there are there is none 
on additional deduction and non-deductible interest expense. Uh, I wish to call your attention to our more than 200 participants. Thank you for listening today. Uh, this is a, 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 please take note of this. Before on improperly accumulated earnings, uh, this, this is the, the, uh, on the tax code, these are the, the dividends that should, should be, uh, that should be distributed to the incorporators, but somehow the corporation decided to hold this uh, under the tax code, they are subject to 10%. However, under the CREATE, it was repealed. And please uh, take note of this issue. You probably read this in the newspaper. Under, before the passage of uh, CREATE, there are on proprietary schools, there are two things. One, is the non-profit, non-stocks, or those religious uh, schools directly uh, uh, providing education, they are tax exempt under the Constitution. But proprietary education institution and hospitals under the tax code on Section 27B, uh, before the CREATE, they, they, uh, they should pay 10% of the, of the net taxable income. In the Senate deliberation, it was reduced to 1% of the net taxable income starting July 1, 2020 to June 30, 2023. However, if you read the newspaper, the BIR under Revenue Regulation Number 5 uh, said there are two conditions to avail this 1% and they said that the proprietary education institution should pay at least 25%. So some uh, power uh, legislators uh, made uh, statements, particularly Senator Agara, Senator Recto, uh, Senator Dillon, and they said uh, the, there was a wrong interpretation. So I guess uh, this matter will be addressed properly by our legislator on the proper in, uh, interpretation. And of course, on the difference from non-resident foreign corporation from 30%, uh, dividends is now exempt from income tax subject to certain conditions. So, on the other side, on the indirect tax uh, on VAT exemption provisions, on this slide, uh, VAT on sale and importation of capital equipment and raw materials for PPE production, those but attending now engage on this uh, production, previously it is subject to 12% VAT rate. But under the create, it is exempt for the period January 1, 2020 to December 31, 2023. But on sale and importation of prescription drugs, medicine, supply devices, and equipment, 12%, again, it is, it is exempt. On the sale of importation of vaccines for COVID-19, it is exempt. So, kaya maraming dumating sit ng mga vaccines at nabahad na bagit nga kanina on the president report by Mr. Luis, konti pa rin na nagpapag-vaccinate or taking their jobs. Sana with, uh, with all these things na dumarating ng mga anti-COVID vaccination and the Congress provided for certain exemption, we should avail of this, this uh, uh, anti-COVID vaccinations. And I'm now calling the attention of those micro small business enterprises engaged on textbook publishing. Uh, there was an issue relative to ebooks, those uh, books in these uh, compact materials, etc. Previously, sub was subject to 12% VAT rate, but under the CREATE, it is now exempted. And uh, of course, on the sale and importation of prescription drugs and cancer, mental illness, tuberculosis. It is exempt starting January 1, 2021. Rel relative to uh, later on, I will discuss this uh, issue about crude oil. Uh, it was uh, discussed that local purchase of uh, zero uh, purchases of uh, crude oil, zero rated. Uh, uh, provided that it's applicable to goods and service directly and exclusively used in the registered project activity by registered business enterprises. Then, crude oil intended to be defined in local refinery, including volumes that are covered to petroleum product when the crude oil actually undergoes the refining process. 
And then the draft implementing rules and regulation, uh, there was a provision on this in order to encourage uh, uh, production uh, improvement of our refinery. The uh, applicable duties and taxes paid on petroleum shall be applied, shall be payable on the lifting of the petroleum product. And if you will recall, under the proposed uh, law, the create and under the proposed IRR, the improvement of our refinery is in year two. So what is the, uh, and this is, this is slightly important, particularly on the legislative intent. What is the purpose why Congress provided for an entirely new title on the rationalization of fiscal incentives? And this is a summary of the provisions in the CREATE. I'm calling your attention on sections 295, 297, 296, 295 of the tax code. So on this, on, the, on my left, right, siguro sa screen nyo, uh, previously pre-create, if you are exporters and some of the majority of attendees today exporters, you need the approval of IPA, domestic market IPA, FIRB before walang oversight sa inyo, industry is covered based on the IPA charter, and on domestic as defined in the investment priority plan, and you enjoy four to six years income tax holidays, four to six years income, income tax holidays, and extension of two more, two more years and three years for expanding period. Of course, no additional incentives for allocation outside of the NCR. Under the CREATE, as stated, approval either by IPA or the Fiscal Incentive Review Board. Uh, FIRB now have an um, oversight and the industry is covered. It will be defined in the strategic, strategic investment priority. And the ITH has been increased to four to seven years under 296A. Uh, we highlighted the provision so that can easily guide you. And of course, the purpose, the intent of your legislators, your congressmen and senators, on additional incentive for allocation outside of NCR, they provided additional ITH of three years, an additional two years if relocate to areas covering from disaster conflict. It was discussed in the draft IRR. So we will dwell extensively along the line. So on fiscal incentives, uh, on the 5%, uh, gross income earned uh, provision, uh, pre-create 5% GIE forever, then domestic corporation, not ITH forever, forever. This is the rationalization, uh, main issue during the discussions, may mga RBEs na 28 years, 26 years, 40, 40 years based on data. So forever incentives, but under the CREATE, ITH will be four to seven years, five, the 5% 5 gross income earned tax for 10 years. Uh, it can be 14 to 17 years, depending on the situation. And of course, enhanced deductions under 296, 10 years, domestic is five years, uh, and ITH. If you see this uh, diagram, uh, your Congressmen and senators really provided bigger incentives for export para mabuhay ang ating economy for exporting. So, mas, mata, mas mahaba yung panahon, 10 years, 17 years, etc. So, there are other enhanced deductions on power expense, labor, training, research, domestic input, depreciation allowance, and recreate. Plus, increase. Uh, either by 50% higher or to 100% higher on the research and development. Uh, the deduction shall be 200% if the activity is located in less developed areas. However, this incentive does not apply to CESA, SBMA, CDC, and APECO. 
So thank you to my staff. Uh, they made this uh, diagram. So pre under Precreate, yung FIRB, the Expanded Mandate Impact Report. Ito lang ang nahawakan ng FIRB, PESA, BOI, CESA, PowerPoint, CESA, and all other IPAs. Yung IPAs natin sa Buanga, APECO, BCDA, APA, Binbataan, and Clark Development. Of course, the Registered Business Enterprise under BOI. And FIRB Board Processing and Approval. Under this scheme, the CREATE, your Congress decides the incentives package. And then incentive package as discussed as provided in the law under Title 13. Now. IPAs now recommend to FIRB who are the qualified registered business enterprises for incentive under Section 297B of the law. And FIRB has an oversight and approval of the tax incentives. Of course, the BOI determines the priority sector through the SIPP. And I'm calling your attention on this FIRB board. Sila yung gumagawa ng rules now. Recall that before, the Secretary of Department of Finance is the chairperson. The Secretary of Department of Trade and Industry was a member, including DBM, NEDA, BIRB, OC, and TRC. But now, the DTI secretary is the co-chairperson. And the member was reduced para mas madali yung decision, the executive secretary of the office of the president, the secretary of DBM, and NEDA. And there is a what we call technical committee. Uh, and I, we highlighted this one. I'm calling your attention. The under secretary of DTI and BOI managing head assistant secretary of DTI is now member of this uh, technical committee. And under the implementing rules and regulation, the draft implementing rules and regulation, malaki yung function niya. Kasi yung undersecretary of DTI and BOI managing head is part of the steering committee that will review the tax incentives and who can avail of the tax incentives. So, yung, kung may mga yung discussion natin later, kung may mga kayo comments, you can address right away to the DTI. Sila naman yung kausap ng mga field export kasi sila yung nag for our foreign direct uh, investments. So, there is a special provision on the CREATE law, the power of the president to grant higher incentives uh, not exceeding 40 years, mas malaki, uh, under Section 301. Uh, it was patterned under the Vietnam law, wherein they provided more than 30 years of income tax salary to some to so para may baka may gustong mag-invest ng mas malaki sa Pilipinas na mas matagal, uh, lalo na malaki na ang, ang employment rate natin, the president has the power to provide uh, bigger incentives. So ito yung mga criteria with comprehensive sustainable development with clear business approaches, minimum investment capital of 50 billion pesos or its equivalent in DARA, and minimum direct local employment of 10,000 within three years from the issue of the certificate of entitlement. Under the draft implementing rules and regulation, uh, they discuss how to apply on to get a certificate of entitlement of tax incentives. We'll discuss that. So, transitory provisions uh, of Section 311, para hindi tayo malito, Congress provided for transitory provisions on the exporters currently enjoying income tax holiday to finish as per your contract or schedule and existing firms under 5% GIA incentive 10 years or more or 5% five, uh, five GIE. Uh, another topic, what will be the impact of create of uh, micro and small business enterprises, of course. The reduction of the corporate income tax will provide the pre 10% of your supposed income can be low back for capital and for employment, for development, etc. 
And just to recall, pero alam niyo naman lahat, your Congress followed the divination of migrant small and medium enterprises on, on, on what is micro industry. So under Republic of 9501, if it is not capital of not more than 3 million micro, small 3 million and 1 peso to 15 million, and medium 15 million to 100 million. So same concept under the CREA. So our chairperson, Senator uh, Pia Cayetano said, business will have more cash at their disposal, which they can use for inventory, for capital equipment, for employee benefits, and more. We highlight this because some issue relative to legislative intent, you always go back to the discussion and statement of the sponsor. Senator Cayetano, to quote, said, Create will provide a lifeline for struggling business affected by the ongoing pandemic through the immediate and substantial reduction of our corporate income tax rate. This will be a game changer for all businesses, both big, big and small, who need as much support they can get during this time of global health and economic crisis. So if may issue, go, always go, go back to the discussion. And of course, our newly confirmed NEDA chief, uh, na tumulong din sa pagbasa ng train. Uh, the impact of CREATE is twofold. First, to provide immediate relief to our micro, small, and business enterprises with a 10% point reduction in the corporate income tax rate. And second, to bring our corporate tax rate closer to our Asian peer. And of course, to attract more foreign direct investments, which will help generate more jobs and accelerate our economy. Based on the data that we collected during the public hearing, uh, the CREATE will uh, uh, help around 99.5% of all businesses are micro, small, and medium enterprises. Based on the data we called from the Philippine Statistical Authority and submitted, and from DTI and submitted to the committee, there are around 891,000 micro corporation, 99,000 small, and around 4%, 4,765 medium corpor uh, corporation and large 4,761. So much 89% of the corporations are micro based on the documents submitted to Congress. And this is the analysis on the effect of income effect and impact of create on businesses on distribution by micro small by industry sector. Siguro nandito kayo sa mga other industry on information, communication, uh, manufacturing, uh, leather, goods, etc. I heard the, the president reports na uh, marami pa rin yung engage of course sa semiconductors uh, and other equipments. And of course, these are the on fishing, agriculture, 16%. So, in terms of employment, because CREATE really wanted to, aside from time driving the economy to provide employment, uh, micro will prove uh, gener generating almost 30% employment, small 25%, medium is 7.5%, or 63%. Of course, the remaining is on the large corporation. So as discussed earlier, previously, tayong pinakamataas na corporate income tax in Asian region at 30%. And the CREATE uh, reduced that. And I may call your attention, there are, in Asian region, there are four countries na may dalawang rate, both for micro and small and large corporation, Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia. And for our country, 25% again for the large corporations and 20 for micro and small. So you can use this uh, to entice uh, foreign direct investment. And of course, as testified, kung mababa daw ang corporate income tax rate, uh, one corporation, Universal Rubina Corporation said, will instead invest in our country uh, rather than investing 
in other region na meron silang uh, uh, subsidiary or another corporation. So businesses including micro and small may avail of the fiscal incentive under create either as domestic enterprise or export as enterprise as long they will meet the conditions set forth in the strategic investment priority plan. So the impact of create on export industry, ito, uh, we will discuss this. New export industries discussed in section 293E of the tax uh, provisions in domestic market enterprise, para hindi tayo malito, under section 293D. So, the law is biased toward export industry. Na ulitin ko lang, the law is more biased toward the grant of superior incentives to export industry, taking into account the substantial contribution of your sector in economic development to employ foreign direct investment, employment generation, transfer of technology, among others. Therefore, while the ITH, etc., may be granted for both export and domestic enterprise, the Special corporate income tax or 5% rate on gross income is exclusively available for export industry. Ito yung concept. And of course, menu of incentive under the CREATE, sinamarize lang namin, the ITH of 4 years, special corporate income tax of 10 years, and that's deduction. And this is the tier 1, tier 2 that I discussed to you. Uh, to our participant, just get hold of my slides 43. Ito na yung pinaka-summarize ng animang kuwang sa kunak location, incentives, etc. Wow. Other issues and concerns? Uh, sinabi na ni Secretary Lopez on the purpose of DTI and nandun na siya sa board ng FIRB. This is the drop ng IP... Uh, Comparison of IPP and SIPP. I will skip this slide. Uh, SIPP, IPP. Uh, meeting lang for reference and discussion later. And we, on my last 10 minutes, I will now discuss the draft. Uh, BIR issued revenue regulations on the tax rates so BIR all a uh, passive income BIR also uh, issued regulation T on tax information your submission of reports etc BIR issued the revenue regulation number four on the other provisions of the law particularly on BAT in sa e-books nga sa mga corporation in sa mga sa housing Yan, uh, it's, uh, ito yung sa books, uh, one o, amending section 109. Uh, now, uh, including the digital or electronic format of the books. And BIR issued also five. Ito yung issue about proprietary education, proprietary hospitals, but other, or yung ano, na lower than dito na rin to comply. Foreign corporation, offshore banking, etc. Let's get the slides for your reference because I want to discuss this. Implementing rules and regulations, just give me an eight minutes. Under the draft implementing rules of regulation, which we get hold of uh, comparing in the provision of the law, uh, please listen that the rules shall apply to all existing. Investment promotion agencies as defined in the Act or relevant Act with respect to the grant of incentives. It also apply and incorporates newly registered projects or activities, including qualified expansion projects of activities or export enterprises, domestic market enter enterprises under SIPP. Uh, applicable also to registered enterprises, projects, or activities currently registered with an IPAs and enjoying incentives prior to the effectivity of the law. And D, other government agencies administering tax incentives with respect to the administration and grant of the tax incentive 
And of course, those GOCs, schools uh, providing subsidy, I think, concept dun sa train law. So what is the general principle para hindi tayo malito under rule on page uh, rule 4 section 1 uh, sin, uh, kinald na namin ang pre -pre policies to create high skilled jobs to grow local pool of enterprises particularly uh, micro and small and medium enterprises increase sophistication of product and services that are produced and sourced domestically and expand and reduce, of course, dependence on imports, etc. So, limbawa, now, uh, on the issue of uh, heritage chicken, marami ngayon mga nag-aalagat ng heritage chicken, mga Rhode Island, Australian Black Torp, uh, Sussex, etc. Yung mga itlog nila organic, yung brown. Of course, you can develop new, new lagayan ng eggs, sa tray, etc. Uh, for import. Uh, and how to export the same. SIPP, under the draft rule, shall give priority to project of activities that are eligible under the Act, scope and coverage. Yeah, naka lay down the, and we check that. Uh, they cross reference with the, the create law, consistent naman siya. So the criteria for investment priority. Determination, as I told you, industry tiers. Can I call your attention on this? Tier 1 shall include activities that ha one, have high potential for job creation. Take place in sectors with markets, value resulting in under provision of basic goods and services. Generate value creation through innovation, upgrading, and moving up a value chain. And essential support to industry emerging. Of course, the value chain, mga pag-produce tayo ng kotse, yung car, uh, in, in, car in the station, car itself is another product. Before the car is the supplier, yung mga parts. Pag binenta na, is the forward industry, yung nasa market na. Iba pa rin yun. So, value chain, iba parang cellphone. So, tier 2 shall include produce supplies, parts, component, uh, that are produced, that locally produced. Import substituting activities, including crude oil refinery. And tier three shall include research and development. And uh, domestically and higher improved efficiency, etc. Ito yung guide natin, what are businesses under tier one, tier two, tier three. Recall my slides on, on the period that you can abate. So this is under sec Rule 4, Section 4 of the draft IRR. So qualified business enterprises under IRR, your provision is under Rule 6, Section 1, yung export and domestic. I think qualification. Who are qualified? Registration of business enterprises. Every project, activity, law, minimum requirement. Then the method of piling they provided now for the piling should be piled electronically through a system prescribed by FIRB. And that is uh, that the IPI system is inter interoperable with and can be linked to FIRB system. And if it, it cannot be piled electronically, you should file two manual copies, sort and before a notary public. So, basic requirements na as a proposal, of course, DTI, registration, BIR, tax account, general company information, business capitalization, authorized representative details, audited financial statement. Of course, basic requirement, ano yung project or activity level information, the location, kasi mga meron another incentives for location, description, Project or activities set up timetable, investment capital, of course, facility, and such other requirements as may be required by the IPA or FIRB. So, under rule, Section 1, Rule 8, to at the application procedure. And after that, under the draft, as I told you, they will give you the certificate of entitlement to tax incentive, or they call SETI. 
the RBE shall apply for SETI which shall be filed electronically together with the requirement. So kung may comment kayo, siguro hindi pa naman final yung IRR, you can submit that to authority yung DTI under Secretary. Then the C1 of SETI. And of course, the SETI projects are activities with investment of more than 1 billion pesos shall be issued by the concerned IPA upon approval of FIR. The SETI shall set new business, the tax account, etc. And the condition for the grant under Rule 8, the availment of incentives shall be subject to requirement conditions set forth in SIPP, compliance with the target performance metrics under specified terms and conditions. Why? Because as provided in the law, meron ng submission kung ano ang na-avail na tax incentives under the TIMTA law at isasubmit yun sa Congress to for uh, analysis. So, tax uh, economic analysis, tax uh, cost-benefit analysis. So, the conditions, uh, of course, under, if you recall, I heard uh, the statement of the, uh, Mr. Barrera and Luis Ortiz. Under the train law, uh, you know, uh, na yung e receipt and e sales requirement under section 237, 238. I guess uh, our good friend Devcom will discuss that later. Part of the conditions for the grant of tax incentives, kapag na ayos na siya ng, uh, ng BIR. Of course, and submission of annual reports of the beneficial ownership of the organization related project for the cost benefit analysis and of course for the Congress to know about the scheme on tax incentives. And this is just a, a sample of the draft IRR nakalagay dyan for discussion and subject to change. At yung pinag-aaralan ngayon FIRB report, uh, we highlighted in your behalf the scope and coverage. at yung diniscuss natin kanina, yung ABC, and of course, at yung relevant provisions on page 6, 40 pages kasi ito, uh, yung mga participant ngayon, nasa page 6 yung tax and duty incentives, and to, rule 2, ayan, uh, it's uh, in my 105 slide, so uh, anyway, we, we discuss naman sa inyo, sana makatulong kami, that's by STSRO family, and of course, on the issue of the enhanced deduction, para wala na po kayong italong sa akin, nandito yung proposal, kailan ibibigay ang enhanced deduction, and the page 7 of 40 pages, and then the additional deductions. Ito rin, uh, under the create, yung BAT, sa zero rating exemptions, uh, relative to the zero rating on crude oil sa mga participants natin dyan. And dito, the direct and exclusive use in the registered project of activity refers to raw materials, inventory, supplies, good expenditure for the registered projects without which the registered project or activity can be carried out. In specify nila direct and exclusively used by the registered project. Then, under this drop, yung period of availment of incentives, inulit natin yung 4 to 7 years, kailan yung makukuha, andito sa tier 1, tier 2, tier 3. So, page 12, para uh, 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 recollection yung ulit, related to sa law, and we double check that sa law, uh, consistent naman siya, uh, and this, this is the drop, at yung content under the top, Ani strategic investment priority plan? Ani yung concept? If you recall, we provided for ABCD on the create of jobs, expand domestic supply, at yung SIPP, yung mga priority project. And of course, yung mga nasa law provided. And spell out the export of at least 70% of products and services maintain pa rin yung provisions ng law. And whether the 
the project of DBT meets the following requirement. Dito na natin na double check. Page 15 of the draft law. And ito yung mechanism ng diniscuss natin how to file. Amendment to SIPP. Yung SIPP will be relevant for three years. Yung BOI shall review the current SIPP and shall consider present development. Uh, in our country, siguro yung mga new concept on industry like yung sa mga Netflix, tulad nyo, may gumawa na yung Filipino, Trece, etc. Uh, para kasi panay K-drama yung napapanood natin, law school, etc. No? Registration and Availment Incentives, and dito yung mechanism, the authority of FIRB on page 16. So, salamat sa aking staff for taking pain in reviewing this create IRR and highlighting it on registration. Uh, relevant to today's discussion, registration of business enterprises, qualified enterprises, yun nga, inuulit, export and domestic, qualification, at saka yung requirements. Uh, we discussed this already, the requirements, because I asked them to highlight it for today's discussion. And kung incomplete, ayan, may mechanism to submit to comply within three days under this. Uh, no. And under the scheme, the FIRB, the expanded power of the IRB, shall evaluate the application those to get your setting and verify validation. So, of course, under the Tinta Law, if you recall 2010, we Congress before uh, kaya na delay ng konti itong long to, pinasa muna yung Tax Incentives Management Transparency Act under our chair then kay Senator Drillon para makita talaga ano ang mga nawawala binibigay na incentives kapalit. So after getting the data, the ground ng cost-benefit analysis, so that's why in 2016 nasimulan i yung sitira, eventually now nakaib. And under this scheme, all registered business enterprises now that will enjoy tax incentive should submit report under this paragraph, the Tax Incentives Management and Transparency Act. Uh, of course, yan, lilista yung mga nakuhang exemptions, whether bad, NOLCO, importation of raw materials. Ayan, nakalist down lahat yan kasi gagamitin din ng Congress during deliberation of the budget. And the rule of IPAs, ang relationship nila, ano ang calendar year, IPA, kung kailan magsasubmit, year ending December 31, should submit on June 14 of the following year, January 1 to November, June 14 of the following year. Please take note of this, lalo na mga participant natin na accountants or engaged administrative details, and the role of FIRB. So... The conduct of impact evaluation, ito yung pinag, uh, pag-aaralan na uh, cost-benefit analysis, uh, impact evaluations ng, ng mga binibigay na benefits, evaluations of the tax incentives, FIRB board review, as I told you, you have a representative there, both in the board and in the technical committee, the DTI, the secretary in the board, and the DTI other secretary in the technical committee and in the steering committee. And of course, uh, the mechanism uh, and effectivity, transit transitory provisions. Ito ngayon yung concept. Of course, uh, as your uh, CEOs or EOs, uh, to all participants, Please take note of this provision, transitory, lalo na yung mga nag avail ngayon ng tax incentives. Please be careful with this. Transitory and miscellaneous provisions, kung, in, kung may in, na-enjoy pa, paano yung transition concept, and of course, on the investment prior to the effectivity of this act. Kung clear ba tong provision na to, and if you have uh, concern along this line, submit that to the proper authority para ma-address before the finalization of IRR kaysa naman ma-finalize na meron pa kayong issue. Timely yung inyong general membership meeting ngayon 
para talagang clear and transparent ang mga rules now under create under implementing rules and regulations and of course other scheme on one stop shop action center non income related tax incentives etc so what are the perks maraming salamat sa pakikinig at sa opportunity to to share uh, whatever we can sa Phil Export na partner din natin sa pagpasa ng mga batas sa tax report at umaattend sa mga hearings natin.